muted. I wanted to share with you all, um, before we get started on our uh, webinar titled Pre-K Instructional Standards Update 4 and 5 Day Models for the upcoming school year, I wanted to introduce the folks in the room um, and steering team member out in her office too. I'm Janet Bockhager. I'm the Pre-K Coordinator in the Office of Early Learning. Um, I'll let the ladies in the room introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Ginger Hoffman with the Office of Special Education. I'm Rhonda Fisher in the Office of Early Learning. Lisa Ray, Office of Early Learning. And we have Trisha Haynes out in um, another office. I'm going to take just a second and pause the recording <clears throat> because I think we're having some issues. Can anyone hear us out there? Go ahead and text in the box if you can. Okay. So some of you can hear, so that means there might be um, there might be some issues out in the field. Um, this this is being recorded, so it will be posted. I'll send out a link to the page on the Office of Early Learning's website where um, this recording will be, and also we'll have some a comment accommodating um, documents too, accompanying documents um, to complement the rest of the webinar. What we're uh, going to share with you all is the actual um, bill. It was sent out, but we wanted to make it easy to access from the website also. The PowerPoint presentation will also be um, sent out. And the transcript for this webinar. So anything that goes in the text box as far as questions, that will also be posted um, so that folks can see questions and, and reference those as they review the webinar in the future. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, Senate Bill 146 was passed by legislation on February 23rd, 2016. Um, and it was signed by Governor Earl Ray Tomlin on March 2nd, 2016, which, which make, makes it effective on July 1st, 2016. Senate Bill 146 was titled Early Childhood, um, it was actually titled Changes, Establishing Instruction Standards for Early Childhood Education. It's a little confusing in the, in the title, so what we want to just you know, clear up is that what this did was um, established minimum requirements for instructional time in pre-K, but it also um, addressed the five-day full day that was set to go in place for next school year. So there are some implications, of course, that go with that, and that's what we'll be discussing today. Um, so the the major change that this bill causes, um, as you can see on this slide is that um, early childhood education programs, meaning preschool programs, must provide at least 48,000 minutes of instruction annually and no less than 1,500 minutes of instruction per week. So uh, what does that mean for you all? And that's what we're, that's what we're going to explore today. So what the bill does and now law does, is give counties local flexibility in program design. Before you had to go, starting next school year, the code said that you had to go five days and policy said that we defined a full day, which it said you also had to go full day, it defined it as 300 minutes per day. Um, with the changes with Senate Bill 146, Classrooms can operate as a four or five day model, uh, but they have to operate for 1,500 minutes a week and 48,000 minutes per year. So this bill actually amends um, code 18544, which is early childhood programs. So all preschool classrooms now will have to meet these new regulations, and that includes preschool special needs classrooms. So all preschool special needs, all preschool classrooms 
all collaborating classrooms must meet these requirements. So we just wanted to take a few minutes to do the math. So if your program <coughs> chooses, based on the needs of your community and um, your children and families, decide that you want to run a five-day program, a five-day per week, you must operate a minimum of 300 minutes per day to meet the 1,500 minute per week requirement. And that would re also require 160 days of per instruction per year. So in order to meet the 48,000 minutes of instruction over the course of the year, you would have, and if you go f five hours, five days, you would have to go 160 instructional days to meet the minimum requirement. Now you could choose to go more. Um, that's up to you based on bus schedule. Um, other factors that may cause you to go more um, than five hours in one day. If you chose to go four days per week, this would require a minimum of 375 minutes or six hours and 15 minutes per day of instruction and you must go at least 128 days to meet 48,000 minutes of instruction per year. Again, this is the minimum requirement, so you could actually go more days um, than 128. So a couple things to keep in mind with these new requirements. These are minimal requirements, as I mentioned already. Um, Pre-K calendars aligned with K-12 county school calendars are beneficial to families whose children, who have children in other grades. So we just wanted you to really consider that as, um, as you prepare to make changes to meet new code. Um, the other thing is that these changes program design changes must be addressed in your collaborative contract. So, you know, for years, um, some, some partners have utilized the same contract annually because there hasn't been a lot of changes. We encourage you at this point, because of the changes, um, and even if you're not going to make changes, if you've already met this, you really do need to look at your contracts just to review to make sure that the that things are addressed appropriately in each section. Um, you know, language in the policy has changed over the years, so you want to make sure that um, your contracts truly reflect your expectations of both partners in the contract. So it's not just um, about these changes, but changes that have happened over the last several years, if you haven't already done a, a thorough review of your contract. Um, you also want to keep in mind potential snow days and how the K-12 calendar um, is adjusted when there are snow days. And an another factor to keep in mind is that pre-K pre school calendars must be approved by county boards of education. Um, and this includes every classroom, collaborative classrooms too. All classrooms where there are preschool children, or preschool classrooms. That includes collaborative classrooms. So all of the classrooms must be approved by the board. So let's take a little bit of time to talk about full-time equivalent. And FTE currently is 24 hours for this school year. To get a full FTE, you must operate a program each classroom has to operate 24 hours. Right now, the minimum is 14. All of a sudden, because of this bill, everyone is required to go 25 hours a week at a minimum. And in order to, and you have to do that, you, it, that will be the minimum and the full FTE. So basically, the bottom is also the top in this in this scenario. 
All classrooms must operate at 25 hours a week. This includes preschool special needs classrooms. All children must attend full time unless otherwise determined by an IEP committee. And uh, guidance on, on uh, exceptions will be provided and will be the same process and weave us as grades kindergarten through 12. So if there are exceptions in other grades, uh, for children who have to have reduced scheduling, that process will, will be in place for preschool also. Um, and we will provide guidance. There is an FTE um, description that we've used for years in pre-K, and that will be updated to match what um, other grades do too. So this will, um, this absolutely will change policy 2525 language um, that states beginning the 2016-17 school year, all classrooms must go five days, five full days a week will, will be removed, and um, the minimum requirements for 1,500 minutes per week and 48,000 minutes per year will be added. Um, and this will be updated and submitted to the board uh, for the upcoming school year. Uh, this will also change in the meal section. Um, we will address the meals requirements because of the, the new minimum hours per day of either five hours if you're going five days or six and a quarter hours if you're going four days uh, will require that all classrooms offer two meals um, and we will will explain better what that means in policy and in guidance because um, depending on the time of your operation of classrooms it could be a lunch and a snack or a breakfast and a lunch but you'll have to provide two meals. Two options, yes, because um, in school nutrition, snack is not considered a meal because it doesn't include all of the meal that's required by USDA or the National School Breakfast or Lunch Program. So, um, but just to say it loosely, two meals will have to be offered to all in all pre-K classrooms. So what does this mean for county teams? you will begin by making key decisions about program design. If you have classrooms currently that um, are half days or go less than four days a week, um, those programs will have to increase their operation to meet the new requirements. Contracts and classroom budgets must reflect the new law. Um, so. It, that language needs to be included and adjustments um, in your budgets will need to be articulated in the budget um, form, which there will be a new budget form presented at the next webinar. And uh, just a reminder though, as you're preparing for the upcoming year and looking at your contracts and budgets and putting those together, every collaborative classroom, every classroom that is included in a collaborative contract must have a classroom budget um, that has to be done for every classroom that is collaborative. So again, I just want to um, emphasize that any half-day programs that are out there must adjust to provide 25 hours or 1,500 minutes of service each week and 48,000 minutes of instructional time for each year. So, what does this mean as far as addendum? Well, if you already meet this and you're not making any changes, of course you don't have to do an addendum. However, there are some instances that you will need to do an addendum. If a classroom goes from part-time to full-time, so any half-day classrooms, any less than four-day classrooms, must have an addendum submitted. So if you if you have those classrooms right now, then you will need to do an addendum. 
Um, if you have changes in collaborating partners, classrooms open or close because of this, or classrooms merge, or any changes to, to the current structure as far as services from half day to full day and, and collaborative partners within each classroom, then an addendum for that classroom must be done. In order to make those structural changes in the ELRS, the addendum has to be submitted to the steering team. That's what drives the changes. So if you are adding a new classroom, it won't be added in the ELRS until an addendum is submitted. So these major structural changes, um, a classroom cannot be added or removed um, without an addendum. I know we have a couple of questions, and I will um, I will review those in just a few minutes. So other changes in the ELRS. Um, classroom will have some changes in the ELRS, um, but you will pre-K coordinators will do those changes for the most part. Um, and again, I encourage you to take the time to look at each of your classrooms and make sure that all the partners who are involved are, are checked. So if it's an LEA and a Head Start classroom, um, partners on the ELRS are selected. Um, if you increase from half time to full time, you, you'll change that in the ELRS. There's an option for AM, PM, or half day. The AM, PM will go away. Um, and the times will need to change. Meals may need to change. So this is a time to really look at that. And you can go in. Um, oh, you can go in and look at those at any time. One change that everyone will have to report in each classroom that is currently not there um, is days of instruction. The days of instruction totals will be reported in the system next year. So how many days you go will have to be reported for every classroom on the ELRS. Now this is just our first introduction of, of all of this. Um, we wanted to make sure that it had actually gone through the whole process. Um, you know, we went through the, for those of you who here, were here last year, we went through the whole process and um, I think it was on April Fool's Day that it was vetoed um, for five day full day and so we wanted to make sure that it, that it went through the whole process before we addressed the changes that need to be made. Um, and so we know that this is the first that some folks are really delving into it. So um, we want to make sure that we get all the information out there. But we, in our spring meetings, we will address um, any questions. We wanted to give you all a chance to talk as teams before we came out. That way, if you do have questions, you can, you know, you can ask them during the spring meeting. Um, and so we wanted to provide the spring meeting schedules uh, in case you didn't know when we'll be out to do the spring meetings. And so you can see on the screen, uh, RISA 2 and 3 will be joined this year. And so the rest of the dates are also on there. So questions. We can um, answer questions in one of two ways, like we typically do. Um, if you want to. Oops. If you want to ask a question and you would prefer to use your audio system, then you can raise your hand or you can type in the, in the uh, chat box. And we do have a couple questions already. Um, one question, so can we still offer two meals and a snack? That, that question is a good question. Um, you, you can still offer all of those things, that becomes a, a county choice. Um, and you just want to make sure that you're working with your nutrition 
specialist to ensure that you're meeting the requirements for meals um, under the school lunch and breakfast programs. Um, collaborating partners uh, have to follow CACFP or USDA guidelines also. Um, so guidance will be included on that just to be sure that you know we have the information out there on the requirements for meals. Another question is, is there any guidance for what is designated as instructional time? Does the entire time the students are at school count as instructional time? The instructional time for pre-K starts when they enter the classroom and does not end until they enter the classroom. That's one of the questions that the legislators really had for us because um, if you go four days a week, the instructional time for pre-K is actually more than other elementary grades. However, we count meal times because two staff are required to be with children and there are, certain, there are expectations based on the curriculum and our standards um, to, for instructional time during those times. So from the time they arrive and enter their classroom, um, if they're in a bus room, that's not necessarily appropriate for young children, um, but some counties have figured out ways to make it appropriate. But you always have to have two staff with, children, with each classroom at all times. And, you know, so from the time they get to school and they enter their classroom, it becomes instructional time until they leave. So you count the meals, you count gross motor time. And those are things that aren't counted in, in other grades in elementary school. So it looks like we're actually required, if you go four days a week, to have more instructional time, but it's more we're more inclusive of all of the elements of the day. Um, I hope I answered that question. If not, if, if I haven't answered a question thoroughly enough, do a follow-up question. Um, who are required partners to sign the addendum to open a new classroom? Addendums must be signed by all the core team members. And when you look in Policy 2525 in Section 4, the core team includes uh, the Head Start representative, the child care representative. If there's not a child care representative, then um, the DHHR representative in your county is that, is that other representative there. A special needs rep and the pre-K coordinator. So those four signatures have to be on the addendum. Now, counties who, you know, the, the child care rep or the DHHR rep oftentimes represents other partners, too. So um, the ch it, these changes, you know, there should be a process for communication with the full team as well. But the, as far as the addendum, the signatures, and that's the first thing that the core team or that the steering team checks is, are the signatures there. And then when you do the addendum, if you're creating a new classroom, and then you need to have um, the information required to add it to the ELRS, and that's the address, um, the name that you're giving to the classroom and the address of the classroom. Uh, but the new collaborating guidance document is provides the information as well. So you'll have um, access to all of this in writing in that guidance document. Another question is, how about nap time? Well, nap time is included in that whole process, actually. So if, if my children, if, if I operate ABC classroom, then my children get there at 8, and they're there until 2. I have a six-hour classroom. From 8 until 2, that's instructional time. And if I have rest time included in that, then um, that's, that's included as part of the day. However, we encourage folks to look at it as rest time and rather than nap time because um, you have to meet the needs of the children. If you have non-nappers, then they should be afforded quiet alternative activities. Um, 
There's no time requirement. It should be based on the needs of the children in the room. And I know from being a pre-K teacher, some children rested, some children didn't, and um, it changed from year to year. So encourage teachers to have flexibility in that rest time, and, and that's part of why it's, it's also included. So just to clarify, um, the question is, so the schedule will include rest time and it will count as instructional time from the, yes, from the time children arrive until the time children leave in pre-K. Yeah, from the time they arrive in their classroom. While we wait to see if we have any more questions, um, I, I do want to mention that uh, the legislators really worked to accomplish two goals. Um, one was to ensure that counties had flexibility to meet the needs of their families and their community. But the other was to create equity across the state for preschool implementation. And so the minimum requirements actually do just that. You can choose to go four or five days. Um, but if you move from one county to the next, as a family, you'll have at least 1,500 minutes a week of, of pre-K. So they did actually accomplish those two, two goals through this process. I know that you all will probably discuss um, this and uh, have questions later. You do, if your team comes up with questions that you, you really feel you need answered, feel free to contact a member of the steering team. Uh, you don't have to wait until the spring meeting because we know that you're knee deep in enrollment, neck deep in enrollment and contracts and budgets and all of those things. So. As you uh, prepare for next year, please don't hesitate to contact a member of the steering team to ask questions to clarify um, these new changes. As we mentioned earlier, policy 2525 will be updated to uh, meet these new requirements. So it will be going through um, the board, the state board process. Um, and will be on public comment. So uh, be watching for that. Okay, so we have another question. How do snow days and, and days of non-instruction impact 1,500 minutes minimum requirements per week? You'll have to, um, you'll have to look at the schedule um, holistically and really hone in on the 48,000 minutes per year when you do have those issues. And there are some, you know, when your county boards, um, when they get the calendars for the school year, you know, typically you, you know, you should, you have to meet 1,500 minutes per week, but a week by definition in a school calendar could stretch over um, during those holiday times and if there's a school day, you'll just have to tack them on at the end to, to make sure that you do ultimately hit the 48,000 minutes um, per year. You know, if, if there's three feet of snow, there's no way you're going to hit the 1,500 minutes per week, but you know that there will be another part of a week somewhere to make that up. I'm, I'm going to ask um, folks in the in the room with me if uh, is there anything else that we need to mention? Thank you for the break. All right. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and end um, the session. And if you think of questions later, like we said, feel free to.
contact us and we'll be out for the spring meetings. Um, our next webinar is on April 1st, uh, but you'll get more information on that uh, in the next few weeks. Have a good day.